Hello, my Bill for a Thousand Nation. How is everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. Yeah, keep staring. I might do a trick. <laughs> Alright. I'm I'm in one of those weird boots today, people. I'm sorry. Alright. Hello, my Bill for a Thousand Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. Alright. We are back with another Lazy Masquerade. This is going to be volume 2 to the other one that we did, which was volume 1. This one is titled 5 Creepy True USA Horror Stories, Texas, Arizona, Missouri, Utah, South Dakota, volume 2. Alright, I really enjoyed the last one. It's got this like sitting around the campfire, Tales from the Crypt type feel to it. Like, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Alright, let's go ahead and get into the day story. Go ahead, turn them lights down low, put on something comfy, cuddle up with someone special. Let's get creeped out, bro. Yeah. This video is part two of my American Horror series, in which I'm narrating one scary story from every US state. Be sure to check out the first episode if you haven't already. Now I'm pretty sure he said there's ten of them all together, so we can do this for a little bit. I'm Like I said, I'm really enjoying it. it I, I really like that kind of like sitting around the campfire type feel. I, it makes me want to turn my light out a little bit and get, get a little spooky. A big thank you to everyone who emailed in their stories. If you'd like me to consider reading one from your state, you can find my email in the description down below. With all that said, please enjoy part two. Missouri. Always follow your I don't gut. claim to be a saint. I believe that. I think you should always follow your gut. I watched this thing where, you know, people, thousands upon thousands upon hundreds of thousands of years ago, you know, caveman style people, Neanderthal, and so on and so forth, they had that massive fight or flight instinct. And it said that, you know, even though people today are not like you know the people then you still have that feeling in you of when you just know something is fuckered up and people call it like their spidey sense where they get the tingle on the back of their neck or you know me i get this gut feeling like i know when something is wrong like i'll wake up one morning and i'm like and I just know something is wrong. Something's off. I don't know what it is, but... Excuse me. Sometimes I can figure it out quite well. Other times, I, I just don't know. And those days, we, don't, we go nowhere. We sit around. We do, like, a movie marathon, pop some popcorn, and we just chill. Me, the lady, and the kids. And then the next day, I wake up, and I feel perfectly fine like there was never any problem so i don't know i'm a firm believer you should always follow your gut feel you call me crazy I, i've been called crazy by a lot of people it's perfectly fine i'm okay with it i know i'm not all right i'm part left and some of my decisions in this story might make some of you think i did the wrong thing but believe me at the time self-preservation was my number one concern and unless you find yourself in a similar situation, I don't think you can say you wouldn't make the same call as I did. With all oh fuck! <laughs> what did you do? Her to her to her to All that said, here's my story. I live in Missouri, in a small town far from any major cities. A short drive from my house is this really huge forest. A few years ago, I was out walking deep in those very woods, clearing my head after a pretty messy breakup. I was in a bad place mentally, and by the time I came to my senses, I realized that I had wandered far off the beaten track. 
I was deep in the woods now. Damn it, I thought to myself. As I stumbled through the brush, to my surprise, I saw another person hunched down in a ditch. His back was turned to me. That was remarkably odd. This was an extremely secluded spot. Why was this guy so deep in the woods as well? And what on earth was he doing? Hiding? Spying on someone? I hesitated, unsure of whether or not I should approach him. I decided I would. Uh, hey, I said. I don't suppose you know the way back to- Jesus, shh! He cut me off. I clearly startled him. As he turned to face me, I could see that he was covered in mud and sweat. He looked terrified. In a quiet voice, I asked him if he was okay. He motioned for me to get down. As I edged closer to the guy, I could see that one of his lower legs was all bloody and injured. I asked him what the hell was going on. Little did I know the trouble I had just stumbled into. This poor guy had been out herping by himself when he stumbled upon some meth lab. Herping, the act of searching for amphibians or reptiles. We learned a new word today. Hell's yeah. Hidden deep in the forest. Some meth heads were inside cooking when they noticed him snooping around. Fearing that their operation was going to be busted. Fucking meth heads, they ruined everything. Now they're ruining the woods. Oh, I seen this. Oh, shit. It was in the news. Like this person for like a few years drove around with a meth lab in the back of their car until one day they got into a wreck. Yeah, I seen it was a while ago. I... Damn. Damn. Mobile operation, let me tell you. They came out with a couple of rifles. It was a little... Sh sh Oh god, it was just one of those little shovel cars. Yeah. And started firing at the guy. He ran through the forest with the men still chasing behind him, intent on killing him and probably burying him in an unmarked grave. He made it as far as he could when he noticed one of his legs was in immense pain. Because of all of the adrenaline, he hadn't realized that one of the shots had hit him in the leg. Now, no longer able to run, he found a spot to hide. The ditch. That's the situation I found myself in. I was now hiding in a ditch with this incapacitated man, with god knows how many armed meth heads out searching for him. I couldn't exactly leave the guy there. And even if I did, what if I bumped into one of the men searching for him? They'd probably just blow me away too. See, that's why I'm a firm believer, even if you know the woods or anything like that, you should always carry... I don't want to say a gun per se, but some sort of protection with you. I would carry a gun. I, I, right there on the chest, that way. Easily gotten to. You never know what you're going to be attacked by. Just because you know the woods well, anything could happen. Anything. Same. Even if you don't believe in carrying guns, carry a fucking sword. Ooh, ooh, carry you a bow and arrow. I don't care. A crossbow. I don't give a shit. Carry something to where you can defend yourself. I'm just saying. Never know what's going to be out there. And evidently you never know who is going to be out there. Fucking meth heads. We didn't have any cell signal out there, so we were really between a rock and a hard place. We must have hid there for a good ten minutes together when we heard rustling up ahead of us. We couldn't see who was making the noise, but it definitely sounded like human footsteps to me. We remained silent. Thankfully, whoever it was passed by without noticing us. Another ten minutes must have passed. The tension was getting too much for us to bear. The guy tells me that he thinks the coast is clear and that he was going to hobble back the way he came. Said that he had a car about 20 minutes away. 
If we could get to it, we'd be able to escape, find cell signal, and call for help. I didn't feel comfortable with that plan. I just met this guy. For all I knew, he could have been anybody. Realistically, anyone could be... He could have been the meth head and maybe people was looking for him. ...chasing him for any number of reasons. I didn't want to get caught up in this mess. Not any more than I already was, that is. Right. Not to mention, he was acting erratic and unreliable. I decided that I was going to go my own way. Back the way I think I came. It was a quick decision I had to make, and I decided to go with my gut. And my gut told me not to completely trust this guy. We both checked that the area was still clear, gave each other a look of good luck, and then made off our separate ways. I turned and looked as he limped off. I hurtled through the brush, hoping I wouldn't bump into anybody. As I ran back in the direction I had come from, I heard something that almost froze me in my place. Two gunshots in quick succession, ringing out in the distance behind me. Then, a third. I swallowed my fear and continued to run. I eventually found my way back onto a familiar path. It led me out of the woods, back to civilization, and back to cell signal. I called the police immediately. After combing those woods, the cops found the lab. It had recently been cooked in, but there were no signs of the meth heads anywhere. They never found the injured man. To this day, no bodies have ever been reported as found in those woods. So the optimist in me likes to think that those shots weren't aimed at the herper. The realist in me, however, thinks he's buried deep in those woods somewhere. I'll tell you this much though, I'm glad I went the other way. When I heard those shots, I knew I had made the right decision. Always follow your gut. I believe in that 100%. But, I mean, there was... Maybe they missed. Maybe they missed him. And maybe after he got so far away, they was like, fuck it, let, let's go back, tear everything down, and get the fuck up out of here. I mean... Probably not. It's probably really, really bad and horrible. But let's let's keep this glass half full. You know what I mean? Roadrunner? Like Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner? Me me me. My co-worker and I were driving through northern Arizona, on Highway 89, between Flagstaff and Page. It was late, something like 2am. We had recently finished our late night shift. Up ahead on the lonely road, I noticed a set of glowing eyes in my headlights. Must be an animal up in the middle of the road. Not wanting to hit the critter, I let my foot off the gas and slowed down to go around it. As we came to pass it, I saw that it wasn't one animal at all. There were four or five, well, coyotes or dogs I guess, gathered around something in the road. But there was something wrong with all of them. They all looked up at us as we came up beside them, and their faces were contorted, morphed. Their features are not in the right place. The thing that they were huddled around in the road appeared to be another dead coyote, all bloody and crooked, like it had been hit by a car. As we drove off, my co-worker told me that one of the coyotes was following behind us. I looked in my mirror, and sure enough, one of them was chasing us off the shoulder of the road. As we gained speed, so did the coyote. I floored it and looked over. I swear to God. The bloody creature stood up on its hind legs and was keeping pace with our vehicle, looking more human than animal now. How it was moving so goddamn fast, I don't know. It was ch
Oh, I'm sorry, that was creepy as shit. Oh, no, oh, no. Did y'all see that shit? Yeah, I doubt that was it, but that was creepy. It's hind legs and was gotcha. keeping pace with our vehicle, looking more human Where'd than you? animal now. How it was moving so goddamn fast, I don't know. It looked like it was bucking like it. It was charging towards our vehicle. Luckily, as we picked up speed, we managed to outpace the thing. I could see in my mirror that it continued to chase behind us, becoming smaller and smaller in my vision before fading into. Hey, it don't matter. Like dogs can smell you, bro. I imagine they're no different. To the distance. We spent the rest of our journey back home trying to wrap our heads around what we had just seen. I dropped my co-worker off at his house, both of us just as confused as when the event had happened. That night, as I lay in bed, I heard strange noises coming from the woods outside my house. It almost sounded like coyotes, but not quite. Something was off about their cry. That sounded demonic as shit. They sounded distorted and slower than natural. Their wails went on for a good long while. I refused to look outside my window, terrified that I'd never be able to unsee the image waiting for me. <laughs> I, I couldn't do that. I would have looked. I would have. I probably would have went out there. Like, shut up. <laughs> We got coyotes around here where we live, and <clears throat> the lady says I'm stupid as I'll get out because I, I go out there. I don't give a shit. I literally go out there. I'm like, you shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up now. I'm tired of hearing the shit. They usually don't. They 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 get relatively close. Not close enough to where I would be worried about it. I'm not worried about coyotes. Like, Coyotes is like literally the least of my worries in where we live. But I would have been the idiot that walked out there and been like, hey, shut the fuck up. I would have started screaming back at the sons of bitches. I would have. I'm an idiot. The wailing suddenly stopped. Then quick footsteps approached my house. Whatever was in those woods was now outside my window. A human voice spoke. What's wrong? Nothing. Go to sleep. It was like two different voices coming from one source. It's hard to explain. These words repeated several times in exactly the same way like a recording. As they did, a loud ringing filled my ears like tinnitus, getting louder and louder. It was becoming too much to bear. A few seconds and a heart attack later, the ringing and the voices abruptly stopped, and the normal silence of the Arizona countryside was all that filled the air. So I would have only went out there swinging a chainsaw and be like, come on, motherfucker. I am done with this shit. I ain't, I ain't dealing with that. I ain't. Chainsaws trump all, bro. Especially if you have like a chainsaw launcher. After all that noise, it sounded quieter than it ever had before. I heard nothing more that night. The scariest part, to me, was when I met up with my co-worker the next evening. I told him about the strange noises outside my Let me guess, they heard that shit too? Motherfucker. The house during the night. His face became ghostly pale. Dude, he said. I heard the same noises last night too. Several years later, I heard from a native gentleman about these creatures called skimwalkers. Creatures that can mimic the appearance and noises of other creatures that they've killed in the past. Including Fuck! I didn't think about that. I would have died. I would have went out there and tried to pick a fight with a damn skinwalker. Son of a bitch.
If I lived, uh, that'd be one hell of a fucking story. If not, that'd be an amazing fucking cool ass death. How'd you die? Fucking skinwalker, bro. Including humans. They usually can't imitate their victims perfectly, though, and something about them almost always looks and sounds off. Really? He also mentioned that they can only repeat the last words and screams of their prey, and that they'd use them to try and lure people into their midst. After hearing his description of these creatures, I remembered my experience years earlier. I couldn't help but wonder if those are what my co-worker and I encountered on Highway 89 that night. I told the native my story. Huh, you got lucky, he said. They usually don't leave people alone. <laughs> Not until they get them. Really? Is that true? Like, they, they'll, they'll come at you until you die? Or they kill you? Or they eat you? Or whatever the fuck they do? Is that why it said, you know, what's wrong? It's okay. Go to sleep or whatever. Sitting out his window because that was the last words they heard his victims say before he ate some poor mother and child or father and child or husband and wife or whatever the fuck it was. <sighs> Bro. They're giving me the goosey bumps. Oh, yeah. I love these kind of stories. Utah. No pollution. I was brushing my teeth in backwards Utah. We had dug this sort of pit thing. It's the middle of the night. No light pollution, so dark as hell. So there I am, brushing my teeth over this big hole in the ground. And I get a very weird feeling, like I'm being watched. Like, right across from me. Nobody else was awake. Screw this, I said, and went back to the tent. Next morning, I see huge paw prints right on the other side of the hole. I'd been standing two feet from a mountain lion. That wasn't very long, but that, that, that. Fuck that. No. I'm going, I want to know what's eating me. You know what I mean? If I'm two feet from a mountain lion, I want to know. But honestly, if he knew the mountain lion was there and the mountain lion knew he was there, it could probably have went a lot worse. South Dakota. If you're from South Dakota, then you may have heard of Walking Sam. He's somewhat of an urban legend in this part of the country, especially amongst the native population. The suicide rate at the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation has been alarmingly high for a long time now. Mm -hmm. As many as 241 natives attempted to kill themselves on the reservation, and that's just in a three month period back in 2015. Damn. Many of them succeeded. Most of the attempts have been from local teenagers, who, to this day, continue to make suicide packs. Adults in the area routinely find nooses hanging from trees. Why? What the fuck is wrong with these people? And frequently have to stop the local youngsters from committing group suicide. Many attribute this morbid phenomenon to a tall man's spirit known as Walking Sam. He's described as being seven feet tall, lean, with no eyes or mouth. He's said to have very long arms. Kind of like Slender Man? Fuck all that, I ain't dealing with no damn Slender Man-esque type shit, no. No. Plus, I like myself too damn much to want to make a pack with anyone to kill ourselves. It ain't happened. From which, when outstretched, the bodies of Lakota men and women hang. The locals believe he roams the streets at night, convincing young teens to kill themselves. He does this not because he's evil, but rather because he's lonely 
and in desperate need of company. On rare occasions, people claim to have seen him around the reservation. Every sighting has been followed by a slew of suicides. As such, some people think that Sam is responsible for the alarmingly high suicide rate in the area. Other less superstitious people say that Sam's just an explanation for the suicides. I get that. I mean, people who don't believe in paranormal and spiritual and all that good stuff, they're going to be like, nah, that's just an excuse to try to justify what's going on. But people who do believe in this type of stuff, they don't want to fuck with that. I mean, and I, here's my thing. I am a firm believer in the, there's, there's a way I'm wanting to say this. It ain't going to sound. I'm a firm believer in whatever you believe in strong enough becomes real. Even if it doesn't become real to everyone else, it becomes real to you. So if you believe that something is happening and you believe it long enough and hard enough, it is what it is. Like somehow you manifest it into existence. That's what I believe. Do I believe that everyone in the world is haunted? No. Do I believe that everyone that acts a little weird is possessed by a demon? No. But I do believe if someone else believes it long enough, it becomes real. Even if it's just real to them. That's what I believe. It's a little weird, but it's mine. And I'm weird, so it's okay. Regardless, the image of a tall, spectral man is enough to send a chill up anyone's spine. Sam is even believed to be the inspiration for Slenderman. The legend Fucking knew it. Fucking knew it. of Walking Sam has been around for centuries. And unless the suicide rates in Pine Ridge suddenly shrink, I'm thinking that this folktale is here to stay. Believe in it long enough, it becomes real. That's uh, that's that, like I said, I, I, I believe in anything that happens because people are amazing. You believe in something long enough, it becomes real. Even if it's not real to anyone else, it is 100% real to you. And I am a person that will go down that rabbit hole with you. I got you. Ride or die, bruh. Got your back. Texas. Yeehaw. I live on a farm in the Lone Star State, and I have some serious problems with my neighbor. He's a real pain in Don't we all, bud? Don't we all? My behind, to say the least. We have somewhat of a rivalry, seeing how he's a farmer himself. I gotta say, though, I'm grateful for that rivalry, and I'll tell you why. I'd been having some trouble with a few of my vehicles a while back. Someone had been slashing their tires. Whoever had done this had also left manure in my mailbox a few weeks earlier, and put broken glass all over my driveway a couple of weeks after that. I was sure that my neighbor was responsible, but when I confronted him about it, he denied any involvement in any of the incidents. I was going to need evidence to prove that it was him. Then I could hit him where it really hurt, namely his wallet. Thus, I installed a few security cameras around my property, small enough as not to be noticeable. My trap was set. Now I just needed to wait for him to strike again. Perhaps a month passed by, and in all that time, there had been no new incidents on my farm. Maybe my neighbor had noticed me installing the cameras. Well, if that was the case, I was just glad it stopped him from coming onto my property, tampering with my vehicles, and pulling all sorts of horrible pranks if you want to call them that. One afternoon, I found myself driving alone back to my farm. 
I've been out of town for the whole weekend visiting. Oh shit. This is where shit's gonna pop off, ain't it? <gasps> visiting family. I was running a little low on fuel, so I stopped at a gas station along the way. I pumped in my gas and went inside the store to pay. Mustn't have been more than five minutes. I hopped back in my car and continued on my way, singing to myself and enjoying some alone time on the long journey back. A good twenty minutes passed, and by chance, I recognized someone walking along the road, heading in the direction of my farm. It was one of my farmhands, a young guy who had been working for me for a short while. He was carrying supplies back from town. Why was he walking instead of driving, I wondered. I pulled over and honked at him, motioning for him to get in with me. Sorry boss, he said. I woke up this morning, and you'll never guess what. The tires on the track have been slashed again. I was going to call you as soon as I got back to the farm. Oh. My neighbor, I suspected. I've got him this time. In a rage, I sped back to my farm, eager to look over my security footage and catch my neighbor in the act, to put a stop to this nonsense once and for all. We arrived back at the farm, rushed inside to the computer, and loaded up that day's footage. There, on CCTV, was a masked figure sneaking onto my property and slashing my tires. It was my neighbor, for sure. His same build, his same scraggly hair hanging out the back of the mask. I was furious, and immediately called the police. Oh, this was juicy. I had finally caught him red-handed. But did you? I have a feeling there's going to be like an M. Night Shyamalan twist somewhere, bro. I am waiting for it. I am waiting for it. My farmhand and I checked through the rest of the day's footage seeing if he'd been up to anything else. Nothing else seemed out of the ordinary. We got to the part where we had just pulled up into the driveway. That's when the footage displayed something that took a while to fully sink in. The footage showed what we expected. In it, you could see my farmhand and I pull into the driveway, get out of the car, and rush into the house. Nothing else happened for a few moments. The car just sat there, parked outside the house. Then, the back door slowly opened. Somebody had been hiding in the back seat of my car. A man I had never seen before in my life carefully exited the vehicle, looking towards the house as if to check if he'd been seen. He then sprinted off my property. I immediately grabbed a rifle and headed outside. I checked the back seat of my car. Nobody else there, thank God. But there was something that made my gut sink. Stabbed into one of the cloth seats was a hunting knife. The cops reviewed the footage and took the matter seriously. Fuck that. Fuck that. <laughs> no. I bet the only thing that saved him was him picking up the farm, man. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, they gave me the heebie-jeebies like a mofo. Seriously. They later let me know that they'd reviewed the footage from the gas station I had stopped at as well. They told me that while I was inside paying for my gas, some wacko snuck inside the back seat of my car. He'd been lying down the whole journey back to the farm, hiding mere inches behind me. Why he targeted me and what he planned on doing, I can't say, but nothing else ever came of it. In a way, I'm glad my neighbor caused me so many problems. If it wasn't for him, I'd never have installed those cameras. Nor would I have passed my farmhand on the way back to the farm. I'm guessing that if my farmhand hadn't been in the car with me, things would have ended very differently. I fucking guarantee it, bro. Off of that. I love this so much. I can't wait to do volume three. I'm excited. Oh, my booty. Oh, my booty. I sit here too long. I really do enjoy these.
E. Look like a damn kid sitting around a campfire, no lie. No, seriously though, fuck that shit. Then come to find out that there's been some dude in the back of your car the whole time. Man, no. I've been out, I've been done, it's been over, mm -mm, I've been... Yep, nope, nope. Cause that, the dude just ran off. Like, who's to say he's not out there somewhere on your farm, like, waiting for you to just, like, stroll out there and kill you? Fuck that. No. All right, if you all enjoyed today's video as much as I did, go down there and scare the shit out of that thumbs up button. If you're a fan of the spooky, scary, strange range, think about subscribing, because that's what we do. And we have fun doing it, bro. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. See? Man, now fucking crazy-ass neighbors, crazy-ass people in your... Yeah, I ain't going to Texas either. No little towns, no tech. I'm going to have to stop watching these kind of videos because I'm second guessing most of my decisions in life. Like,